Um, I taught in, in primary schools for 25 years and then uh, I moved in to work, to work for the local education authority, specifically in the maths department, specifically in primary maths. I worked there for 11 years full time and 6 years part time. And, and during that time uh, I was part of a team. There was a great push on numeracy. We developed a lot of courses, ran a lot of in-service courses, uh, wrote our own materials, worked with schools, did demonstration lessons, and um, our, we were given a large budget and most of our budget went into uh, the teachers themselves, giving them free days out and, and training. I didn't at first. I, I left school at 16 and trained to be an accountant and I uh, found I didn't, didn't like it. So um, there was a, at that time a population explosion in, in the UK and uh, they needed teachers so I applied for teacher training and found I liked it and it was a happy accident. Uh, key stage two from uh, nine year olds to 11 year olds mainly. I did once venture into a year one classroom who was not a sixth okay. <laughs> Special education, those children uh, who are af afraid of maths, I, I don't believe any child should be afraid of maths. Um, they're the ones who, who struggle, they're the ones at the, at the bottom of the class, of the weed group. Um, it often depends on how you approach this trope. They love to play math games. They love puzzles. When working with these children, you've got to have a, quite a variety of material and often short sessions of 10 to 15 minutes so they don't lose, lose their interest. Um, getting their enthusiasm and interest is the key when you're working with these children. Trying something too difficult, first of all, is a big turn-off. With, with, with most children, the, the trick is very simple. You have to uh, get something which will interest them, which they find success and quick success, and, and then you simply move on from there. With the, uh, the gifted children, I discovered that um, in Northern Ireland, there's virtually no facilities for the gifted children, the, the very able children, whatever you want, you want to call them. Um, I did a little project at two or three years ago with uh, what's called G, G and T's, gifted and talented, um, and a couple of schools put forward children. I, I worked with um, three three children, but they were in different schools and different localities, and we did it over the internet with appropriate security measures. And I would post investigations on the internet and I was hoping that they would reply with a solution, or how they got to the solution, and I was hoping they would talk to each other. They didn't do that. They just put their solution on, on the internet, which is fine. But towards the end of the project, I did get the three children together in a little maths competition with three other children. And it was absolutely wonderful for them to meet each other and to talk to each other. And that was the, the best bit. But otherwise, these children are in different locations and they don't meet each other. And also the, the classroom teachers often have great difficulty in finding appropriate material for these children. Imagine a, a child in year one who can add, subtract and multiply. Now how does a, a year one teacher find material and cope with that? How does she stretch that child? It, it's very difficult. Um, for the past six years I've been doing some voluntary teaching in a local primary school with more able groups of um, nine and, and ten year olds and I, you, I do uh, mass investigations with them and uh, I find that when you have them together groups of six is perfect, eight is, is, is fine. When you allow them to relax and talk and discuss and challenge each other and explain why they're working that is a huge benefit to them. Um, when working with these children I just have two main rules is no rulers and no robbers. They simply just get in the way of, of, of work and so that don't be afraid to make mistakes just carry on working. And I, I've got from my own experience I've got one or two little kind of um, hooks I 
call them hooks because they they get the children um interested straight away. and if i could just demonstrate for for two minutes i've got so as you can see i've got ten fingers but if i start counting backwards ten nine eight seven six and five makes eleven well i've got them they can see i've got ten fingers but i've counted eleven now where's the catch and you've got them they're interested and then you can move on on, on from there uh, this was while i was working for the education board where we wrote our, our own uh, mit, mit material um i would i would read a read a, a lot of material uh mass journals magazines articles in, in papers and something would often catch my eye a, a one-off thing and i could see how that would be um developed um I'm sure you've seen the uh, the game Connect Four, where you drop two different coloured counters into a machine. Well, I, I wrote a book um, which which was called Four in a Row, which was based on children solving calculations and covering up the answers with coloured counters, and the winner was the one who got four in a row. So, something like, like that. Uh, Monster Maths was something I saw in a little newspaper, a one-off little cartoon, and I just developed it in line with the mass concepts children are expected to learn in a primary school. So there's a whole load of things. And sometimes going back to history as well, I've used ideas to, uh, uh, to create things for children. Absolutely. About, as I say, about 12 to 15 years ago, there was a lot of money available for education, specifically numeracy and literacy. And we were able to employ staff and to invest money in the schools. We, we uh, in the Southeastern Board, invested our money in teacher training and supporting schools. We often had maybe 20 schools for each member of our team to work with, to go and visit and, uh, and, and work with them. So it's very, it's very intensive and um, I, I feel that now it's it, it, it's paid off. It, it's, it's paid off. We always knew that uh, we were doing a good job. We, in my particular department, we were inspected by the uh, Her Majesty's Inspectorate. We got a, a glowing report, so that was a good validation of our work. Um, and we brought in materials um, for all the schools. Uh, something called the Twenty Four Game, which we ran competitions for not only in our own education board but in the whole of Northern Ireland which helped children with their mental maths um, that's yes I, I feel that uh, that uh, top in Europe was a, a pat on the back uh -huh.